Hi everybody, I'm Matt Frazier with Panasonic, uh, business development for the U.S. market. And uh, we're here today to talk about three camcorders. Uh, that'd be the X1500, the X2000, and the CX10. Uh, they all have very similar cosmetics. So what you're seeing right now is the, this is the X1500. Uh, the camera will be a 4K camera. Uh, it'll record 4K at 60 frames per second. Uh, it also has a 25 millimeter wide angle lens. Uh, 24 times zoom, so it's 25 to 600 millimeters. Uh, the camera has a full-size HDMI port. Probably its uh, hallmark feature for the camera that makes it very unique is its live streaming capability. So this camera actually has the RTMP protocols built into it, which means that with RTMP, you have the ability to put the URL for your live stream, whether it's Facebook Live, YouTube Live, even if you have a server that has RTMP protocol, you just put that URL right into the camera. And once you've done that, uh, you simply hit the user one key and it'll immediately turn on your live stream. So it makes live streaming very simple and convenient. You, also you don't can, need to use a cloud service. No, you don't have to use a, like a bridge website or anything like that. So the nice thing about not having a bridge website is first off, if that website happens to be down for maintenance, that means you can't stream anymore. Also, if that manufacturer were to, some, for some reason, give up on that platform, you would lose your Wi-Fi functionality. Uh, not Wi-Fi, but your streaming functionality. So this really puts the control in your hands. So it can go direct to YouTube Live? Direct to YouTube Live, Facebook Live, really just about anything that's RTMP. In 4K? Uh, it'll do up to 1080 video for that, not 4K. Okay. So once we add this little handle, which the handle will be available for the 1500 as a $300 accessory, but when we put the handle on it, and if we add an SDI port, now it is at 2000. This is the X2000. So you'll get SDI, 3G SDI out. You get the handle, which will include your uh, input one and input two for channel one, channel two audio uh, with full manual controls. You have a light here. Uh, not only is the camera a 4K camera, obviously it'll do 1080 video. Uh, it's important to note that whether it's 1080 or 4K, it's still the same wide angle lens. There's not a crop that has to be done with the camera. Um, the other thing is that you'll get up to 120 frame per second slow-mo function in 1080 with the camera. So um, what's the size of the sensor here? It's a 1 over 2.5, so basically it's a half inch sensor. But keep in mind that the lens is an f1.8 at the wide angle to f4 at the telephoto. Most of the one inch sensor cameras that are out there currently are quite a bit larger with this kind of focal length and they're f2.8 to f5.6. So this sensor, this sensor lens combination is nearly two stops brighter. So uh, you got a brighter lens than competition. That's, what, that's the reason you consider this sensor, right? Correct, and ultimately it was to make a smaller, more compact form factor. Um, we wanted to make a system that could easily be put into a bag and carried around. That's why we chose this. So let's open the screen. How, how good does it look? So it's got a few fingerprints for the... A dual SD card slot. That's great. Correct. So you got dual SD card slots. UHS. They're UHS too. We, we, would, we would respectfully ask that you use a speed rating of V90 for your cards. The reason we choose V90 is that, or V6, really you could use V60 as well. We need a data rate of up to 400 megabits per second because this has the same engine as the GH5. So that means that we have an all-I 10-bit 422 codec up to 400 megabits per second. So we want to make sure that you have a card fast enough. We have a lot of, I would say the number one challenge we have with cameras like the GH series and the S series is people buying the wrong memory cards. They just look at the speed rating and they don't understand that that's for like a single burst of data. That's not continuous write speed. The V rating gives you the continuous write speed. So it's important it's a V60 or V90 card. Any chance you can do 4K 60 10-bit? 10 10-bit uh, 10 420, yes, we can absolutely do 4K 60p 10-bit 420 internally. No question. Or we can use an external recorder for 422 10. So it's not just limited to 4K 30 for 10-bit? Nope, not at all. And uh, you can do the H HLG. So yeah, so this does have hybrid log gamma, so if you wanted to encode your videos ready for HDR, uh, which is nice because YouTube can support HDR as well, uh, you can absolutely do that with HLG. So uh, then uh, one click, you record HDR footage in 4K60. Yeah, especially for your kids' soccer games, you're going to have great looking footage for your HDR television set. So then we have a step up from this, that's the CX-10. So the CX-10 looks identical to the X-2000. 
Where the CX-10 differs is in a few key areas. One, where the USB port is. There'll be some additional technology here that allows us to use an Ethernet adapter. So we'll be able to plug in, get an Ethernet out, which means I can now stream content over Ethernet. Um, the camera will also be compatible with NDI HX protocols. So that means that for streaming applications, I can buy a nice switcher made by a new tech TriCaster, and that will allow me to switch multiple cameras on my Ethernet stream. So if you can imagine a world where maybe you have a studio set up and you have multiple cameras connected via SDI, but then you want to get outside the studio, maybe you're capturing people coming into your studio or it's a house of worship, you want to capture your parishioners coming in. All I have to do is jack this into any ethernet port that's on the network with my TriCaster and that's going to allow me to then pick this camera up. So it makes it easy for me to get my content any place where I have an ethernet connection available. Um, the other thing it'll include is it's not only SDI, I'm sorry, SDI, I'm getting my numbers, my letters mixed up. It's not just SD card compatible. It will also be P2 or micro P2 compatible as well. So if a broadcaster wants to use this camera and they've already made their investment in micro P2 cards yeah. uh, and they have a micro P2 workflow with micro P2 player, this will be compatible with that as well. And this means that I can go ahead and, it, that means we're also gonna add some codecs to the camera as well. So you're going to get micro, you're gonna get specific codecs that are ABC intra codecs that are compatible with your micro P2 card players and readers. So that means there will be P2 slots on it? No, it's the same slot. Micro P2, uh, P2 is, is the same as form yeah, Think of it as a SD robust, card. think of it as a robust SDI card reader. All right. Uh, so this is UHS 2, right? Correct. Card slots are UHS too. Both. And um, can, can you show the UI a bit? You said you have up to 400 megabit. You have all these. Sure. I can you have all these functions in there. Sure. Let me go in the camera's menu. That's going to be under system. System. Oh, sorry. So we have MOV, MP4, ABC, HD, record formats. Um, sorry, I just changed record format. So we can see as we go down the list. Nice, so lots of different options right there. And up to 60p and everything. Correct. Uh, HEBC? Options um, too. Is it only in 30p, the HEBC, or now you can also do 60? So HEBC will be available, that's where your 4K 60 10 bit will be, so if we Sorry, if we go into our record formats, um, here's our all I codecs. If we go all the way up to 2160, 59, 2160, 5994, uh, 420 long bit. Uh, this is our HEVC 200, that's our 10 bit codec. That's your 10 bit, 4K60. Correct. 10 bit, it's HEVC, so HEVC allows for higher quality at lower bit rate, kind of, right? Yeah, just a smaller file size. Uh, Any of the HEVC uh, codecs will be 10 bit in the camera. Fully compatible with YouTube, just upload them directly. It's only 200 megabit. Correct, they'll be smaller files, absolutely. But it'll be 10 bit, that's a nice upgrade. That's nice to... Absolutely. And uh, so is this for the market of uh, YouTube Arizona? What do you so, think, who's gonna buy these? So I think there'll be a percentage of YouTubers and uh, creatives who are sharing their content online that'll be interested in a product like this. Um, but I also think that there's gonna be a lot of interest with uh, education channel, people who are wanting to offer streaming of education programs online. This would be a great solution for them. Uh, great solution for House of Worship. Uh, there's really just a lot of different application for it. I think um, there's been a demand for a compact form factor that isn't as cinematic presentation. You know, something that's not reliant on a large sensor depth of field. Sometimes you just want to do news gathering or you want to have a very video styled look to it because you're just trying to communicate information. And this kind of camera is very easy for that. Uh, the autofocus system is exceptional in this camera as well. Um, we feel that it's the finest and fastest autofocus in this class of product. So it's not because everything's in focus. I'm joking, but it's, it doesn't have that much bokeh. Right? It's not going to be a camera that produces a very shallow depth of field, no. But fastest autofocus, you, you, you feel this is fastest auto, faster autofocus than Sony's one inch camcorders? Uh, uh, absolutely. Better than the Canon? 
in, in our testing, we feel that it's the best autofocus system in the market, even against one inch cameras from our competitors. But it's contrast only, right? But um, in, in that time of uh, sensor size, is like uh, a stable? Autofocus. Yeah, it's been great for us. So we're, we're expecting very good results from it. Uh, what is this? It says hybrid OIS. So what's happening with this st image stabilization in there? So it's a. It's like watching TV somewhere. It's a. We wanted to leave you alone. So this, we have an optical stabilization system that has a ball roller system to help smooth out the autofocus, uh, the stabilizer. But then we also offer an option for slightly cropping the sensor and doing an electronic stabilization in conjunction with the optical stabilization, uh, providing exceptionally well uh, controlled and stable footage. So it's not uh, sensor stabilization, but it's crop. There's an option for electronic stabilization. A, a crop option, an option for crop to work in conjunction with optical. It's a little bit of crop, uh, like N negligible, negligible. Negligible when you use that feature. All right. So uh, great for handheld smooth footage. Definitely. And how about the nice viewfinder here? So viewfinder's right there. Good quality in there. What kind of price do you have for the, the range? So the 1500 will sell for $1,699. The 2000 is going to sell for $2,199. And the CX-10, um, as of right now, it should be $2,795. And how soon? Uh, the first two cameras should be late March. The CX-10 should be sometime in April. All right. So uh, this is semi-professional, -prof right? Yeah, I think it sort of bridges the gap. I, it's an interesting market today. Uh, I would say that people who are streaming content online um, that are making a living at that are professionals, and this would certainly qualify as a professional camera for them. And it's wide, nicely wide. Right, 25 millimeters at the wide angle. And you can you can uh, you can flip something there, but there's also manual. Yeah. So these are things. this is focus, this is zoom, um, and, and then these are your neutral density filters. So we can add tinted glass. So when we're outdoors, we can get we can knock down some light. Uh, I apologize. This is your s uh, dial for. Uh, it's a multi-dial, so it can be used for controlling the iris, it can be used to control the volume of your headphones, um, it can be used to turn on the auto-continuous auto gain functionality. Uh, it's a multi-wheel. Multi it's also an, a way to navigate the menu if you don't want to use the touchscreen. So it's nearly professional, no? It's like taking a bunch of stuff down to more affordable from the professional line, or? So we, we make a camcorder called the CX350. Um, that is a one-inch equipped camera with a very similar menu system and feature set. So it's just quite a bit bigger than this camera. So it, it wow. shares d a lot of DNA with the CX350, <laughs> which is absolutely a professional camera. All right. Is there any chance that because you have all this um, kind of like internet streaming and stuff, is there any chance you could do a one-click upload to YouTube? Well, that's not really, it's just for live streaming. Uh, for what we've planned to do with it, it's just for live streaming, not for just a one-click to YouTube. And you can't just use the Type-C on all the, the whole range to get an Ethernet. Uh, it's uh, only on the one that has a for the hardware Ethernet behind, the ch behind this, the port. Yeah, to my, to, again, having not plugged that into any camera but the C CX-10, I, I can't confirm yeah. that, but it should not give you it on anything other than the CX-10. And there's Wi-Fi, so you can do all that live streaming and stuff on Wi-Fi. Right, that's how it's operating. It's Is there like a, a limit in terms of bitrate of what you can live stream? Well, we offer you different settings for bitrate. So we have settings that go up to like 24 megabits per second, all the way down to certain codecs are a one megabit per second codec. So it allows you to set it. So let's say that I'm on a, a cellular connection on my, I'm hotspotting on my cell phone, and I've got maybe a slower internet connection, I can bring the data right down to handle that. Is there any chance that uh, on this screen you might be able to handle multi-camera or something like that? How do you handle multi-camera? Is there any chance to do that for the live stream? No, there's no multi-camera functionality. This would be a single camera live stream. Single so, camera live stream? Yeah. You would need and, to make an investment in a device like a Sling Media or some sort of a switching system for that. And then uh, uh, you can uh, easily set it up for YouTube. It's just using RTSP. You don't log in on your YouTube account with the camera. So you do some kind I, of I can briefly show you how that's done. Um, so it's in the camera's menu, it's under network, it's under streaming, um, where it says receiver URL, it's grayed out right now, but I would just click receiver URL. Yeah. And then um, what you do is on YouTube, uh, I can explain for YouTube Live. Yeah. On YouTube Live, you'll open up your live stream 
um, not not make it public yet, but just open up your live stream. In there, you'll have two codes. There'll be the URL, and yeah. then there'll be a little code that identifies your specific live stream URL. You simply copy your URL. You can either type it into here by hand using the... It's like numbers. Yeah, kind of. using like a keypad on here, or you can just copy and paste it onto your SD card. And what you <coughs> want to do is you want to copy that, and then you want to add a backslash, and the second few digits, then that second portion of the code, and that creates one code. And then you can just bring it in from the SD card right into the menu. Nice. Awesome. So live streaming is going to be cool and easier with this. Yeah, and you can see the streaming format here. Yeah. So there's lots of different format options, and it just depends on how I've set the camera initially as to what we're able to do. But we even have down to 320 by 180 at a half, yeah, 0.5 megabits per second, so. And who knows, maybe YouTube is gonna make it easy to do multi-camera somehow. You can have multiple RTSP and uh, like some kind of control panel on the YouTube UI maybe or something. But right now it's just one, I guess. As of today, yes. Yeah, all right, okay. And uh, so it's been busy here to see yes. Correct. Yeah, you caught us on the last day. So, uh, thanks. With the Harley Davidson Electric over there. Yes. Live wire.